you know, I invited Manny up to Norway here to uh, talk about what we're going to do for the second album and um, we agreed to do a pure studio album this time. So the previous album was pretty much done live in the studio, so we had a couple of overdubs, you know, after. But this one has been layered in the studio, piece by piece, and in order to do that, uh, typically what would happen is that I, I would uh, write the song here in Norway, I would then go to the UK and rehearse with uh, the band, from there I would go to Spain and uh, me and Manny we would sit down and we would uh, record the uh, vocal and guitars and then uh, after that we would have the band coming in to do their bass and drum parts. Yes, with my friend Helge here. He did, sort of, did some stuff in America initially when we met, we met. spoke about doing something together. And, uh, did like four songs in the Sun Studios in Memphis and they turned out real great and we've got on really good as, as friends and we work well together and uh, we're going to do it again. So here we are, the second album. What are you hoping to achieve with this album? I'm hoping to sort of get something that at the end of the day that everybody who's been involved with it feels sort of proud of and something that they sort of look back on with, uh, with joy and happiness and I think that's the that's the main thing because uh, to a certain degree I mean you know we all hope that it's going to do well and we're going to get some uh, some more uh, you know good reviews uh, which we had uh, you know for the first album obviously so, so the, the, it's always hard to do the second album because you kind of think, well, what should we do? Should we sort of do a similar thing or should we do something new? So it's it's always all these decisions that you take, you know, and I find it, the whole process interesting, you know. So many times it's not uh, the end product, it's the, the goal is, is basically the journey getting there. So what we're doing today as well is like, sort of be creative and create something out of nothing. That's, that's basically the whole purpose of the album for me. What's your feeling, you know, when you approach like a new record like this? Well, it's rock and roll. I know what rock and roll is. Mm. I've produced many albums for Nazareth and I've been in a very successful rock band and toured all over the world with them and gold albums and platinum albums. So I know what rock and roll is supposed to be. I'm, I mean, I'm a fan. I'm a rock and roll fan. I'm, you know, I'm from day one from where I left school and heard Elvis and Chuck Berry and Carl Perkins and Buddy Holly and all these guys that just inspired me to play guitar, so I'm a rock fan. Mm. And I know how it should sound, I know how I want it to sound. And Helga's pretty much all, a lot of this, along the same lines as a lot of the, the ways I feel about music, is pretty much in the same boat. So it's, it's relatively painless really. Yeah. But a drummer and a bass player, I mean, it's a rhythm section. Yeah. Rock and roll rhythm section, just play, play simple. Mm. Play what's right for the song and don't try and impress people. It's not yeah. what it's about, it's about the song. It's about playing your instrument yeah. for that particular song and doing the best you can. 
yeah. be, a mus- be a musician, not a show off. The, the roots of Helgi's music is basically either country or blues, and, and I like I like that that area of music, but I don't want it to sound old. I don't want it to be you know sort of retro or you know a tribute kind of bar band blues record, which you know I'm tired of. You know what I, what I tend to do, what I tend to do is, is I say to myself, would Zeppelin do this? You know, would Zeppelin make this record? If they, if I if I can't answer that positively, and then then I don't think that the the, the music has life or innovation. You know, or try to push the envelope a little bit, not be too sort of out there, but just move on a little bit from the last record. Yeah. A lot of different disciplines involved when you're engineering and producing and playing and writing and, yeah. and trying to help somebody get the best out of their performance, trying to get something out of somebody that they don't know they have. There's a lot of uh, different hats you have to wear. Yeah, it's... A production is like that, you know, especially if you're producing an, an, and engineering and playing and trying to help to write songs. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to figure out where the rhyme is happening here. Yeah. So it's supposed to rhyme with hair, isn't it? And a blue ribbon. And a scarlet ribbon. And a scarlet ribbon. I thought pale blue ribbon is quite good, you know. Does does it sound all right or not? Too many words, I think. Okay. You think? Yeah. It might, it might, might, I'll, I'll mesh with the acoustic. Yeah, it might re- replace the acoustic. Hmm? Might even replace the acoustic if it's not nice. Like the combination is always nice. Yeah. Uh, straight acoustic and an abdominal always works really nice. Yeah. politics going on, yeah. especially when you're dealing with maybe three or four people simultaneously, that you don't really know. Yeah. It's a case of, you know, trying to win trust, but at the same time, be direct, and get the kind of performance out of them that you, you know or you think you know that they're capable of. You're just always, always trying to get the best out of people, and that's what a good producer does. Tries to get the best out of the, the artist. Not, you know, sugar anything up, tell them they're great if it's not great. Yeah. Tell them that it's really, really good when it is good. Try to tell them that that is enough, or otherwise they'll be playing guitar solos till the end of friggin' time. Mm. Like some people I know. <laughs> Never happy with the, the last take, you know. You know what was annoying uh, is I, I used to rehearse the guitar part for like weeks on end in Norway and travel down to Cordoba, and then Manny would hear it and said, "Well, that's really, really good, um, but it would sound better if you do it like this." And he was actually, you know, do it much better than me. So many times, you know, like part of this is fantastic guitar lessons for me as well. Um, not only sort of recording and writing, but also learning how to play properly. So it's 
been a good uh, learning experience. What typically used to happen in the studio is that we used, used to change the whole song, you know, like add the verse here, remove a chorus there, change the key, change the song structure, you know, the tempo and everything. So by the time the band comes into the studio, the song would be completely different to what they rehearsed. And that would obviously be a challenge because with limited studio time, you know, you would then struggle to get the song finished to a certain standard. And that's why we're grateful for uh, Manny's friends and our friends now in Spain to help us out with some of these overdubs. And uh, we also had uh, Neil Murray from Whitesnake back to do a couple of songs with us. So we're happy for his involvement again, you know. You actually uh, got the songs, you know, over the internet. And so then you lose the sort of connection with the drummer that you had on the previous one. So how do you deal with that sort of... Well, I did quite a lot of sessions like that, where I get sent stuff over. Um, in some ways, that gives me more control, rather than having to be on, you know, on a particular day at a particular time, you know, and, and if I want to do 15 times round the same song, I can. Um, or if I just want to do it twice, I can. Whereas in a studio situation, it might be on somebody else telling you, no, we've got to do another 20 takes of this, and you're going, oh God, yeah. kill me now. Yeah. So, uh, actually, when I think about it, the ma majority of the players we had on the Fluffy Jackets album, they're back for this one. So, that's been amazing. Just really happy about it. Uh, I was thinking maybe you should uh, talk about the original Fluffy Jackets. And the, the reason you know I met the drummer is because I met you know I met you first yeah and then you organized yeah. a charity gig yeah and then you needed a guitarist and I hadn't played publicly at that time and mm. I think you were over at a party somewhere or it was when I was living in West London no Somebody... it wasn't it wasn't it was it was actually from that tube it was the tube yeah. journey, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so that right. was that's, that was the first time we met. So we were. Yeah. I was already involved in someone else's community music project, yeah. um, doing backing vocals and percussion, and then I, I was, we were both coming back from somewhere one evening yeah, on the yeah. tube, London Underground, yeah. and we, we we sat like ten minutes, maybe less than that. And I, I gave you my number, or you gave me yours. I can't remember. Yeah. And I jumped off the train. Yeah, and yeah. And, yeah. That, and that was the start of our our friendship. Called that's you right. up, and you got yeah. involved. At that time, I hadn't played with anyone. So, so that was so nice my, to you. Yeah, I always tell this story to this day. It's like, because I, I'm, I'm not a trained guitarist in yeah. any way. And, and at that time, I didn't even know what the chords, you yeah. know. Yeah, I played, I knew I was play, playing chords, yeah. but I didn't know what they were called. Yeah, 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 which ones they were. Or if they were major or minor yeah. or... So, like, uh, one of the songs, somebody said to me, I said, well, you know, I think, yeah, this is, sounds great, but... I think this is, should be in E minor, that particular note, <laughs> and not E You're major. Going, what? I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I did say to him, it's like, uh, is that a European E minor or is it a UK E minor? Because they are totally different. <laughs> <laughs> and he just looked at me. I was like, what do you mean? Like, it's like, yeah, well, you have to show yeah, me because nice I don't know what you mean. That's a nice way of getting out of it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, is that an imperial what or metric? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> e minor, you know. <laughs> you know. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it was great, wasn't it? it you was met okay. all those people, yeah. and from there, we, you've done like this loop. Yeah. And now suddenly, I'm, I'm back you're, in, in yeah, the Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what's amazing about this is obviously that you, you know, join now. Yeah, so you yeah, can, it's fantastic. You know, we'll have the start of the fluffy jackets. Yeah. And then you, the end is all tied in together. It's all tied in. Yeah. It's so amazing. lovely. It's yeah. so nice to that you asked me when, when you. Yeah. Were. It's great. Yeah. Yeah.